2023 is definitely the year of AI. A lot has changed in just the first couple weeks, and I expect that by next year, the world's going to be a completely different place. There's a lot going on, though, and a whole lot to take in. So in this video, I wanted to go over some of the things that I've been actually finding extremely useful. There's a lot of AI stuff out there. There's a lot of information out there. But I want to show some of the things that I'm actually doing to use AI day to day in my game development career and even a little bit outside of game development. So if you're a human watching this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and let's get started. I'm going to start with image generation because I think that that's probably the thing that people get most excited about and it's the easiest to really understand. And the image generation tool that I use most often right now is Midjourney. It's on midjourney.com. You can sign up for free and then you log in and go through the Discord server to generate images. You can give it a prompt, tell it exactly what you want it to imagine. It gives you four variations of that thing and then you can either upscale them or create new variations based on those other versions or the the results that it's given you so if i see something i like like this i can just click the variation button and then suddenly you get new versions of it once you found some images that you actually like and want to use you can download them through discord but my preferred way to do it is to go over to the mid journey page refresh my home page and then see all of the things that I've generated. Then I can just go pick the exact right one I want without scrolling through. Now you might be wondering, what are you using this for? What are some of the actual practical use cases? There are quite a few of them. The first one that I've used it for really, really consistently and really well and really loved is concept art. Being able to generate ideas, come up with something that looks really cool, and then send it over to an artist and have them create it without having to do a whole big back and forth process with a concept artist who may or may not understand what I want and is definitely going to charge a lot of money. I don't have a big concept art budget and now I can do concept art completely free. It's fast. It's really painless and I love it. And the artists that I've been working with love it as well because they get something that they just can work off of and they don't have to make any guesses. Another thing that I've been using it for though is thumbnails. YouTube videos need thumbnails and AI generation is great for making some interesting, cool thumbnails that can match whatever topic I'm thinking about with again without me having to find an artist and a designer to come up with all of that I can just have something generated pop some text over it and it looks pretty good and works pretty well in fact that's what I did for this one another use case that I've seen and I've seen quite a few people doing this not just myself is putting the characters or images that you generate of characters as portraits in your game. So if you've got an RPG game and you need some character portraits for your character sheet, or maybe you've got some interactive UI elements and you need little AI characters to pop up or something like that, it's really cool for that because you can generate all kinds of different portraits, modify them however you want, do them in whatever style, and then make hundreds of them that just match and work well for your game. Again, completely free. One other thing that I found that works really well and is extremely easy, kind of applies to just about every game though, is a uh, background generation. You've got backgrounds for your game, not like your um not necessarily like your tiled world backgrounds, although those I think will be easy to generate sometime soon. But if you want to do like a, a game over screen or a menu screen or any of those types of things, you can generate these images, just pop them in and they look great. One of the other video game specific things that I found really useful is generating UI elements. They're not perfect, but I found that I can generate sets of UI elements that match or icons that I can use in my game that just work and look pretty good. It's a lot easier than going and searching for sets of them. I can specify exactly what I want if I want sci-fi elements, if I want specific um, sci-fi inventory items for a space game, I can say that and get exactly what I need. And I can get back hundreds of them and just use the ones that I like. I find this really cool. The last thing that I've been using AI image generation for is website development. So if I've got a spot on a website, which every game just about has a website and needs some UI work done, some graphics there, I found that just generating cool graphics that match the idea of what the website's supposed to be for has been extremely easy. It's so much easier than trying to go through an artist and a web designer and everything else. Not perfect, it's not the best result, but it's so much better than just about everything else that I've done in the past. Now, there are some things that will tie all this together and we'll talk about that a little bit later. 
Before I move on, though, I do want to mention that there are other image generation tools out there, quite a few of them, in fact, and we talked about a lot of them on the Game Dev Show. So if you're interested in seeing more of them, I'll put a link for that down below. You can go check it out. But I wanted to share the one that I'm really actively using, and that's right now Mid Journey. So what else am I using? The other big thing that I'm using that I think everybody should be diving into is ChatGPT. You've probably seen some stuff about this a couple places. There are lots of videos flying around about it about all the different things that you can do. But I want to just tell you some of the actual practical things that I've been using it for and see if any of them apply to you. Also, if you have some practical uses for ChatGPT or MidJourney or any of this stuff, please drop a comment down below. I want to make sure that I'm not missing out on anything. I'm sure there's lots of stuff that I could be doing and I want to make sure I'm doing all of it. So the first thing that I've used ChatGPT for and the first thing that I kind of defaulted to it for was asking it code questions for things that I wasn't quite sure on. Something as simple as like, how do I um, rotate around an object in 2D? I, I can loosely probably remember it. Go look it up and look at the formula. Um, I, it's, it's halfway in my head, but I would probably typo it or get it wrong. Type it in there, get the code, pops right back up exactly how to do that. Now, for most things that I've needed to actually solve most problems, ChatGPT isn't really giving me code to solve those problems. There are a couple of things. Usually it's on the more mathematical or formulaic problems, the things where I'm just not quite sure how the math works or how things line up. But when it comes to the actual logical stuff, there's um, I, I'm not getting personally as much value out of it. But I can see a lot of junior and intermediate developers getting exactly that, being able to see how they could structure or rearrange their code to fix different issues or to make it slightly better. And that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about next was one of the coolest things that you can do with chat GPT is paste in code and get some feedback on it, get some ways to rewrite it, shorten things up, make it better, look for bugs, or just explain what it does. I've done this once or twice where I pasted in some code that looked a little bit weird, asked it what it did, and it explained exactly what the shortened down version of the thing was doing, which really most of the time, again, comes in handy for me when it's mathematical stuff. And I'm like, I don't really recognize this formula, but I can paste it right in and it'll tell me exactly what it is. Another cool thing that you can do with ChatGPT that I've only barely started playing with, it's not something that I'm actively using it for, but I might do sometime near in the near future, is writing unit tests. You can give it a method and then have it write a unit test for that method. You do need to have unit testing set up in your environment, which it's not going to tell you how to do that. But if you have that set up, then it actually writes some pretty decent, pretty usable tests. I don't know if it's going to be a perfect uh, testing solution. I probably won't switch over to it permanently, but I do think that it's kind of a neat thing that it does. Now, I want to get past the code because I feel like really with chat GPT, it's cool. It's good at writing code. It can do some things that I definitely can't, but, um, when my expertise is already in code, it's not as valuable to me. There are some things that it's a lot more valuable to me for, and those are generally around, uh, design. So some of the cool design things that I've been doing with, well, design and outside of game development, but some of the cool design stuff that I found with it is, um, writing game design documents. You can have it literally write you a game design document from scratch on just about any kind of game. I mean, there probably is any kind of game you could do it. And then you can have it fill in details, give it back more information and get a nice, I would say good template or starting point for a game design doc. Of course, you could probably use it to fill out the entire thing and get all of the details everywhere. But I think that just using it as a starting point is more than enough value because it's one of those things where I struggle like, hey, what should I put here? What section should I have? Um, how should I lay this out? Is there important stuff and how can I word things? And this just gives you a great starting point. It also is cool for um, formulas for your games. If you're not sure how to do a damage formula, you're not sure how you would do a um, scaling formula that does damage from level one to 50, you can set, you just kind of put that in there and then get some examples and ideas. Again, I don't think it's going to give you the exact thing that you need for your game, but it does give Give you a lot of ideas and kind of get the mind going and get you kind of ready um, to, to really implement it in yourself. Now let's talk about something super practical that it can do because I think that this is um, actually hit the like and subscribe button because this is probably the most valuable thing that chat GPT can do. If you're looking for jobs, you're trying to find a uh, game development job or any other job, put your resume into chat GPT. 
have it re review your resume, give you feedback on it, and then have it um, modify your resume so that it fits the specific job that you're looking for. So say, hey, here's my resume, paste it in. Hey, make it apply more to this specific job, paste in the job description. It's going to modify your resume, readjust things, and put in some of the keywords that they're looking for. And then after you do that, you know, obviously you go look at it, make sure that it's good, didn't make stuff up and didn't ruin your resume. But after you do that, and even if you don't do that part, have it generate a cover letter for you. It'll write these nice, beautiful cover letters. You could get a couple different variations of it in about a minute and then have that to submit with your resume. I always see people talk, talking about how they don't want to do a cover letter. They don't know what to write and all that stuff. This will just do it for you. It's amazing. Um, again, double check the stuff with, with any of these things. You got to double check it, make sure that it looks good and it didn't say anything completely crazy and it actually makes sense. But for the most part, what I've seen is it writes great cover letters, updates your resume pretty well, and gives you good feedback on things that are wrong, typos, misspellings, um, bad formatting, missing information, that kind of stuff. It's really, really cool for that. So if you're looking for a game dev job, um, make sure that you check it out. Or if you're really, if you're looking for any job, I would say go check that out. And don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and share button for that one. Now let's move on to the last few tools that I found really interesting and useful. The first is one that I've barely started using Using, and I haven't actually found a practical use for it yet just because I haven't needed to do a presentation, but it's this tome.app page. It allows you to generate a 10 page presentation off of a single quote. So I'll do one on using AI for video game development and you'll see that I'll get 10 pages with text and images all automatically generated. I believe it's using some stable diffusion model plus chat GPT to generate all of these, but I'm not sure on the exact details. I did think this was really cool and I'm kind of waiting for the need to do a presentation. I've been sending this over to my friends who I know that do lots of presentations to see if they can find some cool, interesting use for it or see if they save a lot of time, but I can see myself saving a ton of time because I really hate creating presentations from scratch. And this is a really nice starting point. The next tool I want to share isn't something that I've needed to use myself, but it is something that I referred to a friend who was able to save a ton of money. And I think that you might have this same situation. This is a website builder. This one's on durable.co and it allows you to generate and build a website just by giving it a prompt. Now, if you're already a developer, you're probably thinking like, I want a lot of control. I want to be able to do whatever I want to do with my website. But if you don't have any um, actual experience building websites, then this is a great way to just generate something cool that works and saves you a ton of time and money. Now, if you need a complex advanced site, probably not going to go with something like this. You're probably going to build it yourself because you're a developer. But if you don't, you just need something quick or again, you have somebody in your family or friends that just keep asking you, hey, can you make me a website? Hey, can you do this? Hey, can you make that? Just try sending them to this and see if it works. It might solve their problem or there may be some other alternative versions of things just like this. My expectation is that in the next uh, couple months, months to the end of the year, all of the website builders will be integrating things like this and all of the different hosting companies will have stuff like this. But I think it's really exciting and really interesting to play with and again, probably make some of your friends happy at the very least. The last one I wanted to share today is something that I haven't actually had a chance to play with myself. I just signed up for the closed alpha and I'm pretty excited to try it out because it sounds and looks very exciting. It's something that was submitted as a um, talk session for Game Dev Guild. So if you're interested in learning more about this one, maybe check out Game Dev Guild. It's coming up uh, in the summer of this year. Hopefully you haven't missed it. It's got a little while. But it looks like an AI generation tool that's supposed to generate worlds. It says text to 3D creation platform powered by natural language and then see there it says a big forest with a river and two large mountains in the background and it's got this minecrafty world with that generated so i'm really curious to see if this um you know if it's anywhere near as cool as the uh the page right here makes it look and seem and where this goes so that i can totally imagine being able to go into game type in the thing that I want to get, or maybe not into the game, but into the engine or into some tool, type in the level that I'd like to have generated and then get a bunch of levels. I could think that this is something really cool for 3D games, even for 2D games. Just imagine being able to generate a bunch of platformer levels with your different components and then have it come up with interesting, fun things.
things. I think this is really exciting and I just can't wait to see where it goes in the next few months. And, you know, I was thinking about this. I was, I said this was the last thing, but I lied. There was one other thing that I've seen in the last week. I'm not using yet. It's not a practical use case for me, but I think it could be for you and for other game developers. And that's this integration of chat GPT into Mountain Blade to Banner Lord. You can see they've got a full video. I'll, I'll link it down below where they show the NPC is essentially responding to chat using chat GPT. You can talk to them and have a conversation about their lives, what's going on, and have a lot of game context. I'm not really sure exactly how this works with in-game context in the training, but I do think that it's amazingly awesome. I'm super excited to see how this is going to tie into future games and be like a hollow deck, which is kind of the future of gaming, in my opinion, or at least where, where I think it'll probably end up long term. All right. I hope this was helpful. Hopefully some of those past tips, the chat GPT and mid journey stuff are useful and you can go use them. I'll link them all down below too. Again, I use them all the time. Can't imagine not using them now. I've already signed up for the, uh, the premium chat GPT thing that they put out. Um, if you're interested in any of that stuff, though, check it out. Go hit the thumbs up button, like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you have any ideas or thoughts on stuff that I should be using, questions about this stuff, or if you just want to say hi. All right, thanks again. See you in the next one.